Hey guys, ABP Man here. Were you lucky enough to score a Google Pixel 3a or 3a XL? Well, if you got one of these and you want to really know how to use one of these, then you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to give you the first 10 plus things you should do to maximize the use of your Pixel 3a or 3a XL. So now if you're new to the Google Pixel uh, line of phones, um, in this video I'm going to give you a little bit over 10 tips that are going to allow you to maximize the use of this phone, regardless of the phone that you're coming from. If you're coming from a Samsung, if you're coming from an LG, or if you're coming from Apple, and you just got the Google Pixel 3a or 3a XL, then you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to show you some quick tips that are going to maximize the use of this phone. In the next video, I'm going to have more tips and tricks, but this is the quickie that's going to help you get the max as soon as you pick up the phone. Let's get right to it. Now let's get right into the tips. So the first thing that you're going to notice on your phone is that you may not even have the same wallpaper I have. So you may be wondering, what's the quickest way to get wallpaper? So I'm going to press and hold, and I'm going to choose wallpapers. Now here you're going to find a full series of curated wallpapers that are available, um, and you can see that there are various types, and they're all broken down by cityscapes or by lifestyle. So you notice you have life, you have art, you have cityscapes. The one that I just chose was a cityscape one. And you notice how you have some really, really nice, um, I would say high resolution photos that you can use to change the look of your phone. So you notice right here, this is the one that I chose because I kind of like that black and white feature. But you do have color splash. If you go over here, this one that has art, you'll notice that if you like those kind of splashy colors that are going to show off the screen, then that's something you can do as well. So all you have to do is once you choose the the actual background that you want. I'm going to go ahead and choose the same one that I chose. So I'm going to go down here and find it. All right. All you have to do is t uh, is move it to the area that you want because you can have different looks simply by moving it to the left or to the right or just putting it in the center. So this is what I would like mine to look like. So right there in the center. And then what I do is I do set wallpaper. I can say set it from the home screen and the lock screen. Uh, I want them to do both. So I just say set them both. And now when you come back, you'll have a brand new wallpaper. Again, personalizing the phone, making it yours. Now one of the things about the Google Pixel 3a and 3a XL is the battery life. And it's rated to have fantastic battery life. But as you can see here, as soon as you get it out of the box, you can't tell what percentage you're in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this area. Uh, we're going to actually take a look at all our settings. So I'm going to go into the settings area and we're going to look at the battery area. And then notice how you have a setting right here that says battery percentage. As soon as you turn that at, bam, you get your percent. Now this next tip has to do with navigation. It's really not a configuration change, but if you're new to the Pixel line, you may have never multitasked before. So let me show you a couple things about multitasking. First of all, if you swipe up, you're going to be able to see all of the uh, recent applications that you were in. So you can swipe through these rather easily. So if like, for example, if I wanted to go to uh, this Google page, that's all I would have to do. Swipe up, and then what I could go is to the next area. So that's one way you can move. The other way you can move is just by swiping like this. Notice how I'm just swiping on the bottom. This is a quick way to go to the previous window that you were in. So if I were to swipe up and I were to go here, when I swipe back, I'm gonna go to Chrome. See how that worked? So it allows you to swip, switch back and forth really quickly. Swipe up or swipe across and you'll be able to get to the previous apps. Now the next tip I'm going to give you has to do with multi-windowing. Now if you're coming from an Apple environment, this is going to be new to you. So all you have to do is to multi-window is swipe up and then you'll notice how you have these little big icons right on top of the application that's open. So what you do is you press and hold here and you'll notice that you have split screen. So once you choose your split screen, you just go to the application that you'd like to have as your next split screen. Now keep in mind that this is really useful and we're gonna find, let's go into, yeah, we'll do Google, uh, actually YouTube. This is great, especially if you're uh, in navigation mode and let's say you have Spotify open, uh, you can have navigation mode or let's say you have your email and you're trying to type in a phone number. This is one of the things that you really use a lot. You can see your phone number and you can actually dial at the same time. So when I do this, notice how I have on the top, I have my Google Chrome, so I'm, I can see that. And then over here, I have actually a YouTube video. So I can play this and it's gonna continue to play and I can actually still search as I'm watching the video. That's what Windows is all about. Now, for those of you who are curious, how do you get rid of the window once you're done? All you do is you swipe down. It's that simple. Now, this next tip allows you to personalize and use the phone even further. So if I swipe down for a second, and I'm going to do a double swipe, I want to show you that you have all these toggles here. See, these, you have these things, and these things are called toggles. Now, what you can do with these toggles is that you can rearrange them. So let's say, for example, you'd like your flashlight to be up here. So if you press and hold, 
you can actually drag this. Now this next tip is about personalizing all of your toggles. So as you swipe down, these little things right here are called toggles. And I'm gonna swipe down. And you'll notice that I have a series here, but there's more that you can actually see and also you can personalize these. So if you tap on the little pencil, you'll notice that you have more down here. Uh, one of the things I wanna do, for example, is I want my flashlight to be over here, right? So let's turn that off. And then I also then would like, and you notice down here, is I have my hotspot. So I use my hotspot a lot. So I'm gonna move this up here as well. And you notice how I all of a sudden have more room. Uh, I don't use auto rotate that much. You know, I don't turn that on and off. And I think that's pretty much what I want. So I've now organized this how I'd like it. I'm gonna hit back. And now this is personalized to my need. It's that simple. Now this next tip is gonna save battery life. As we swipe down here, you're gonna notice how things are white here. So I'm gonna show you something that I can do. If I go into display, and if I uh, find my display setting, and I go into advanced, I can actually turn on this new feature which is called uh, themes. And this is, I'm gonna go into the dark theme. Once I choose dark theme, and I go back, let's do this, what you'll notice is now these toggles are dark. I find that these are easier to read in my opinion and also what it does is it helps save battery life. So the dark theme is something again free, all you have to do is turn it on and then everything looks just like this. Now this next feature is going to allow you to sleep, rest or study depending on the situation that you're in. So if you don't want anyone to bother you during certain times of the day or even at night, all you have to do is work on do not disturb. So what we're going to do is we're going to press and hold on do not disturb. By pressing and holding it goes into the actual setting, it doesn't turn it on and off. Tapping it turns it on or off, pressing and holding takes you in. So what I'm gonna do is notice here, I'm going to basically say, I'd like to automatically turn it on and I wanna have it happen um, you know, uh, during certain times. So when I'm sleeping. So I can say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday um, at 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. I'm not gonna get any, uh, any kind of notifications, no text messages, no phone calls. And as I go back, uh, and I go ahead and set that. Now what I have is that one rule that's enabled. Now you can set exceptions. You notice this area right here? So the exceptions would be, let's say your spouse. It could be your kids. It could be your brother and your sister, or it could be work. Whatever you, you put into the exception area, and that exception area could be start contacts, it could be repeated callers, or whoever you define, you'll be able to set that. And then also you can do the same thing for messages. So in my case, my phone goes dead. No one can call me. I don't get any notifications, no Instagram, no Facebook, no YouTube. And then in the morning I get them. But if anyone in the family that I want that's on this exception list needs to get a hold of me, they can. So it's a great feature to have. Do not disturb. Now this next feature is going to make it easy, really, especially at night. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, this cool feature and it's going to be, it's under the settings area again. So we're going to go into settings, we're going to go into display, and then what we're going to do is turn on the night light. Now the night light is about adjusting the color and intensity of your screen and illuminating the blue light uh, so that, it, or puts like a blue light filter on it so that it makes it easy for you to fall asleep. There are different studies that say that it, with the bright light like this, if you're reading it in bed, um, it's harder for you to get sound sleep. So if you enable this, and I say turn it on now, it basically, notice how it's changing the color of the screen? It's making it softer. Imagine if like um, your phone goes off and you're asleep and you just grab the phone, your eyes kind of bug out because it's so bright. This is gonna help with that, right? It's gonna tone it down and you can change the intensity. So you see how I'm doing this? You can actually change your intensity to whatever you want so that you can see it in a better light. Now, one thing that could be driving you nuts is every single time you tap on the screen, you hear this little tap, tap, tap or sound. So I'm gonna show you how you turn that off. So we're gonna go back into settings again, and then we're gonna go into sound. And then I just wanna show you under the advanced area, what you can do is you can configure dial pad tones, screen locking sounds, charging sounds, or touch sounds. So if I turn that off, everything is nice and quiet now. You don't hear anything. So you can turn off any of these sounds individually, as well as adjust the volume of others. It's a great tip. Now this next tip is going to also simplify things for you when it comes to just overall using the phone. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into settings, and this time we're gonna go into system, and then what we're gonna do is go into gestures. And there's a whole bunch of gestures here that you're gonna to wanna to use. So you notice that I've had to swipe down to get to the menu. Well, what if I was swiping on the fingerprint sensor in the back? Well, watch this. I'm gonna turn on this area right here and notice how it's showing you right there. When you swipe that, the menu is gonna come down. So I'm gonna turn it on, now watch. 
See how that opened automatically? So now I don't have to use my finger to swipe, but if I'm holding my phone naturally like this and I'm swiping, it just comes down. So that's one tip in gestures. Now the next tip in gestures, and there's quite a few here, is actually being able to jump into the camera mode. Now one of the things, if you tap this little button here twice, it would jump to camera. Watch this, it goes immediately to the camera mode. So that's a really, really cool feature. Uh, and you can enable that by just tapping that as well. Now there's another feature that's called flip. So let's say you wanna do a selfie, but the camera's facing the wrong way. All you gotta do is just move the phone like this and it automatically switches as well. So that's a neat feature to turn on. And then uh, the last one is flip to shh. Let me show you that. As you do this, if you turn this feature on, what will happen is, and you flip it over, it will put your phone in do not disturb mode automatically by just flipping it down. Great for if you're in a study hall, great if you're in a library, you just flip it over, or even if you're in a conference uh, in a meeting, flip it down and do not disturb will be on. Now this phone has a feature that's called the active edge. And the active edge means that if you squeeze the size, something is gonna happen. Let's do that one more time. If you watch this, you notice how this opened up? So it's gonna open up your Google Assistant and allow you to ask Google some questions. Now the problem that you can run into is that if you put on a, a firm case, it could be hard to squeeze sometimes. So what I'm gonna show you is a way that you can actually adjust the edge. So you notice here, uh, in this area, this is gonna be important if you have a case or even if maybe you don't have the strongest grip, right? Or the phone is a little bit too big and therefore it's hard for you to, to squeeze. What you can do is adjust it, uh, adjust it from light to firm squeeze and that's gonna make it more responsive or less responsive depending on your situation. So not say you wanna be able to change the size of the fonts or the images on the screen. Let's face it, you have a six inch screen but you just may wanna make things a little bit bigger. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go into display again. So let's find our display. And then what we're gonna do is go into advanced, and then we're gonna choose default size or display size. Choose that. And then what we can do here is we can actually adjust things. So notice I can make it bigger, how it makes this stuff bigger, or I can make things smaller, All right? I could also look at the impact that's gonna to have to my um, actual application icons. Notice this, look how much bigger it makes it. So depending on your vision, uh, let's say you have a low vision, you can actually make things however large you'd like it to make it easier to read. So this is how big it can get. And this is just all in this simple setting um, in display for display size. Great tip. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone and you wanna mute the colors, or if you're coming from a Samsung device and you wanna increase the color, the colors, here's what you do. So we're still in display, you can go into colors and you have a couple options. I don't know how much this is gonna come off on the screen or on the recordings, but we'll see if it shows. So right now I have it in adaptive, right? But you can say boosted, and it's supposed to make things more saturated. If you choose natural, it makes things a little bit more muted. So choose the color that or option that you like. Either adaptive, let it do its own thing, boost it if you want, or go with natural. At least this will allow the phone to adjust to what you're used to, or it gives you the ability to make things more vibrant if that's what you'd like to do. Now this next tip is about removing some features that you may not like in the phone. Let me show you this. When you swipe over, you're gonna get this news feed, right? So let's say you don't wanna see that news feed anymore. All you do is you press and hold, you go into home screen settings, and then home screen settings, what you can do then is just say, see where it says this display Google app? you can turn that off. Now, once you turn that off and you go back, it's no longer there. So that concludes our quick tips to get you started with the Pixel 3a XL. I'm gonna have a series of other tips that are gonna go much more in depth in the days to come. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell icon, and that way you'll get notified when new videos become available. I'll see you in the next one, and thanks for watching.